Five and dime in any town USA. But go inside and the similarities end. Because this building, which used to be a Woolworth store, played a prominent role in the civil rights movement and was inaugurated today as a civil rights museum. Housed here, a collection of memories from America's segregated past and the actual seats that helped end that segregation at Woolworth's whites only lunch counter. This counter no longer serves lunch. Now it serves as a reminder of a time when not so long ago, people like me weren't allowed to sit here. Until four college students said, enough. This thing was an evil, uh, pure and simple. On February 1st, 1960, Joseph McNeil and three other young men sat down and ordered coffee and apple pie. And the question is, if we didn't handle it now, who would? Would our children be left with these same problems that we were facing? They did not get served, but they did not go away. Were you afraid? I think we're too angry to be afraid. In fact, others joined them. The crowd grew bigger every day until the lunch counter was full of people, black and white, demanding an end to inequality. The protest hampered business, forcing Woolworths to choose between the color line and the bottom line. Six months later, Woolworths integrated nationwide. Joe McNeil, Franklin McCain, and Jabril Kazan, the surviving members of the Greensboro Four, were the guests of honor at today's ceremony. If our country screwed up, then that blast it will change it. And you did. Woolworths closed its stores in 1997, but the new museum keeps this building alive, as well as the memory of what happened here.